Hello everybody, it's Wendy, and today we are going to start a piece of seashell and resin art. So, um, I've had a lot of people asking me to show how I do my seashell and resin art, and so that's what I'm going to do. So the first thing you have to do is prepare your frame, and um, a lot of the frames that I use, I get either at Goodwill or, um, it's a weird thing here in Florida, I've never lived anywhere else that they do this. But everybody, if you want something picked up by the trash, you just set it out on the curb. So everything ends up out on the curb in Florida. <laughs> I mean, there are people that actually drive around on Wednesday nights because our trash here comes on Thursdays. And, um, you know, you can find about anything you want. Um, there's couches, there's fridges. I mean, everything. It's crazy. I've never seen anything like it. We always had to pay to have stuff hauled away anywhere else I've ever lived. <laughs> um... But anyway, I will find picture frames. People will put whole pictures, you know, out in the trash. And so I'll take it home. I will clean it up, um, paint it if I want to. This one I painted with chalk paint and then a diamond glaze over top of it. Dragon, It's called dragonfly, dragonfly glaze. It's like a color shift kind of thing. It just gives it sparkle. And um, then I use clear Elmer's glue and I take whatever picture is out and I should have just done this all on film, but it's, I did this days ago. Um, I take the glass out, and on the front part of the glass that goes in the frame here, I put a bead of glue around the whole frame in here and set the glass down on it. Then I put another bead of glue around the outside, the back side here, and I use Elmer's Clear Washable Glue. I don't use the white glue because it leaves, you can see it, I just, I like the clear. Um, and then I let that dry overnight, and then the next day I go around it with another bead of glue on the outside. I want to make sure that the outside is coated really well so that when I pour the resin on this, it will not leak through, okay? So I'm trying to make sure that the glass is, is in there and there's glue I'm adhering it. So after I do, you know, two or three um, rounds of the glue and let it dry, then I paint it, put painter's tape on here. And I've not done this before. I've skipped this step, and believe me, I have regretted it. So <laughs> I always want to put the painter's tape on there. It just is way, way better for, you know, you don't end up with uh, resin leaking through as much. Sometimes it still does. It's really hard sometimes to get all the little nooks and crannies and keep the resin from leaking through. But I try really hard, and um, so sometimes I'm successful, sometimes I'm not. All right, so with this one today, I'm going to be making a cross. Um, this is going to be for a lady at my church. And um, so this is what I use the broken pieces of shells a lot of times. You see me pick up on the beach and everybody's like, please show how you use those. Well, okay, I'm going to do that today. So I separate these shells out. See, a lot of people would never pick this up because it's not a whole conk or a whole whatever it was to start with. But for me... This works perfect for what I'm wanting to do. Um, and I separate them out in a couple different ways. So <laughs> it's my system is uh, when I clean these shells and then I put them in baskets here in my craft room, um, I use, these are twisty. The, I call these twisties. I mean, they're parts of conch shells. They're parts of tulips and, you know, whelks and all that. But I just call them twisties because they're just the pieces of them. Um, and I put very twisties. So... <laughs> I know it sounds silly. Ones that are a whole twist, like this, in one container. If they are a twist opening up to something, like opening up like this, I put them in a different container. And that's just kind of how I separate them out so that uh, when I am looking for a certain piece to put on here, I know kind of which basket to look in. And, you know, it's not foolproof. I end up with some things in some containers that shouldn't be or whatever, but for the most part, it works out for me. So what I like to do is take a longer, um, pretty twisted up piece for the bottom of the cross. So I'm just going to look through my pile. I've got a big pile here, or a big basket of shells. Um, it doesn't matter if they hang. Now see, he's kind of opening up, but yet he's a full twist. So I've got him in that pile, but he could technically go in that pile. It's just one of those things. Um, so for the bottom, I like, like I said, a little bit of a longer piece. That's kind of pretty there. Um, but I try a lot of different things. Like, you know, I'll try this one. How does this one look? 
or I'll try it this way. And you'll be surprised sometimes when you lay it down how different it will look. If there's one that I think is promising, I'll set it over here. So this is a process. You have to kind of take your time here and you want to make it look really pretty. Um, so, you know, do I want to use that one there? That one's a little bit big for this frame. So I'm not going to use it. So this is what I do. I just sit here and you're going to get shell pieces and sand and stuff on your frame. Don't worry about that. We'll take care of that later. But I'm going to show you the whole process from beginning to end, including pouring the resins and the alcohol ink. So this might be a long video, but this is not something you do in a short amount of time. In fact, it, it takes days. <laughs> I kind of like that one too. So I'm liking these ones here that are kind of open and loose looking along the bottom. I think I like that one a little better just because it seems to lay a little bit flatter, but it's not as pretty as the other one. Um, so I'll just keep looking. That's what I do. I just sit here with my shells and I, you know, try different things on the bottom. I don't like that. Now I could break this off if I wanted, but I'm not going to. I'm just kind of just playing around here. That's pretty. Oh, that's pretty. I do kind of like that. I like the way it, it bells out at the bottom. Okay, so I'm really liking that one. I think I will go with it. So what I do is I take the Elmer's glue I just put it along the back that I know is going to touch the frame and I position it where I want it. Don't worry about getting glue. You know, this glue will not show, especially once the resin is poured over it. But the thing is, we can only do the bottom layer right now and then we have to let this dry for 24 hours or for overnight. Um, so I'm going to look now at what I want for a top. Um, so I just basically... Do the same little process. I'm just looking, just trying different shells, different pieces to see what looks pretty. And as you notice, I have, this is a, a um, tablecloth from Dollar Tree, Dollar 25 Tree, um, that I've put down here. And the reason that I do that is it just, you know, this is a glass table that my friend Robbie gave me and I want to protect it. So now that's kind of cool right there. I don't know. Let's lay that one up there just in case. And this is, you know, this is what I do. I just look through. This is kind of cool looking. What's that look like up there? I like these on the sides a lot with these open. They look like, kind of like hands. I may use that for a side. Let's just lay it there a second. Um, this should go over there. And you just have to, it's total trial and error here with these. You just have to kind of. And it's going to be beautiful. They all turn out beautiful. I've never had one that I didn't like, but I just have to try. You have to sit here and you have to find the right piece that looks good to you. That's kind of pretty for the top. This is pretty too. I like these ones that are like a full twist, but that would be better on a side or as a fill-in probably. I kind of like that, but not totally. Um, I'm sorry if I'm getting in the way of the camera. I'm trying not to. I kind of like these ones that have the top on, the point on them for the top because it just gives it kind of a cool look. And your middle does not have to touch at this point, okay? What you're trying to do right now is just lay out a framework. Um, so here's a whelk shell. That's kind of pretty. That would make a pretty top. Um, you don't want it to be too big. You know, you kind of have to... Look, that had a lot of stuff in it. And I have cleaned all these shells. All these shells have been washed, soaked overnight in soapy water, and then soaked overnight in... Well, most of them have been soaked overnight in bleach as well. Um, because if you don't, they stink. They smell terrible. That's kind of pretty. I always have trouble. The bottom layer is the hardest for me to get down. And once I get the bottom layer down, then it goes pretty quickly. That's kind of pretty right there for a top. I kind of like that. Let's go with that. So I'm just going to take my glue, just put it on in different places, and set my shell down. And again, don't worry about all the little pieces that are on here. I mean, I might kind of brush them aside or something, but we'll get them off. So I'm just going to lay that down. Now, you want to make sure, and because I'm on film, I'm trying not to 
be on camera, but usually I stand up and look. I want to make sure that my middle of my cross is in the middle of my frame, pretty much. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to put other things around it too, but you want to be fairly well lined up. Now I'm going to find some arms. So once I have my top and bottom, then I want to find some arms. And for the arms, I kind of like these wider open pieces. So I will just go through them and look and see for the arms on the cross. Oops. That one's way too big. Look at this guy. <laughs> He's huge. I don't know what I'll ever use him for, but I might. I never, whoop, never know. I may make a gigantic cross one day. That's kind of pretty right there, isn't it? Let's lay that one there. And when I do the arms, like these two kind of match. They're kind of the same color. They're probably the same kind of shell, you know, the same thickness and, you know, texture. I try to do that with the arms. I don't know why. I don't really do it with the top and the bottom. And we're going to fill in with so much other stuff that, but I just kind of think it makes it look better. So for them, I'm just doing the same thing, putting it on. That one flipped over. <laughs> and just kind of laying them on here. I don't really want it flipped over. I want the, stop it now. Oh, you're not, you're going to be difficult, are you? You laid there a second ago without flipping over, so what's the deal? Maybe I should flip them over. No. They look better like this. Okay, there we go. He's just trying to be difficult. So I will just lay them out kind of symmetrically again, trying to, you know, and I'm just going to dab some glue around the bottom of that one and this one right here just to kind of give a little extra. All right, now... This one needs to come out a little more because that one's got a wider sweeping. Okay, so here is the bottom, the foundation layer of my cross. Now, um, you can go ahead and work some more on the middle here if you want to. So, like I could, you know, lay a couple more foundation pieces if I wanted to. Um, but for the most part, this layer has to dry before you go on to do much more, okay? So what I would do here is because this one is a bigger, more open piece, and that one is a bigger, more open piece. This one is a more closed piece, and that one is. I'm going to put one on each side. So this kind of draws that, and that kind of draws that, if that makes sense. It probably doesn't, but it does to me. So hopefully it does to you too. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a little glue on. And the main thing I'm trying to do is really just keep it symmetrical, pretty much, and um, pretty. I mean, you want it to be pretty. You want it to be symmetrical, and you want it to be pretty. So I try to make sure, like right here, I've got these two even. Out here on the side, you know, this one could come out a little, but he keeps wanting to flip. Stop it. Um, so that one... But you want them to be kind of the same length because you're going to fill in this middle. So that gap is not going to show, okay? You're even going to fill in some on top of, you know, all these. So you've got to get your foundation layer down first. So that's kind of, that's too big. Um, that's what I do for the first. And then it's, like I said, it's going to have to sit overnight until your glue is really dry. You want your glue to be really, really dry. That's kind of pretty, the way that fans that out. I want it to look like a cross. I'm kind of making it look more like an angel, I think. <laughs> I want to keep a cross look, so let me find one smaller. That was pretty, though. Could do an angel, I guess. Um, this one would be pretty there. Then I would need to find one that kind of matches it over here, kind of like that one, but it's not big enough. But you want one that's going to have... You don't want them to be too awfully different. So that guy's a little bit, I don't have a whole lot like him. That pattern, maybe that one would work. It's a little bit. Now I do have, you can take pliers or whatever you want and break pieces off of these. Like if I wanted this to be smaller, I could break this off. Be careful doing that because I have cut my hands so many times and it hurts. So they're sharp. These shells are they're sharp, so just be careful doing that. I um, don't really have a whole lot of that color, that 
Um, I don't know what that is. It might be, it's probably a piece of a tulip. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to get out my tool here. So I've got, these are actually glass breaking tools. But these are my running pliers and I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to break that off. Okay. Because I would kind of like to use this piece over here, but I just don't need it to be that big. See, that looks much better. And I could actually break off just a little bit more. Maybe come down here with my plier. and You kind of want to do it gently. And like I said, carefully. But that looks pretty good right there. So I'll go ahead and glue these on. I'm liberal with the glue because you want this thing to hold together. And when you pour the resin, I mean, it's obviously when the resin cures, it's not going to go anywhere. But you want it to hold together while you're making it because you're going to be stacking shells and while you're pouring the resin and everything. So I'm kind of liberal with the glue. Like I said, it does not show at the end when your resin goes on. You don't see the glue. So that's pretty. Now we need something here. Let's see what I can find to put there. It's a little bit big. And believe me, once you get going on this, it will not look the same in the end as it does in the beginning at all. <laughs> it will completely morph and change and it'll be pretty. They're a lot of fun to make. I love them. So those two are similar. Now, if I have something like that little, I don't know if that is a piece of sand or what, but I have some dental tools here that I bought from Amazon and I'll just take it and scrape it out. You know, sometimes there's a dark shell stuck in there or sand or whatever. And that looks pretty good. So your bottom layer is not gonna be perfect, definitely. I mean, I'm gonna break this little piece off of this shell with my plier if I can. Yeah, that little piece that was sticking up on the edge there. Okay. Um, the bottom layer is definitely not going to look perfect. I mean, it's it's got a lot of spaces in it. It's, you know, but that's how it's supposed to be. So don't be alarmed. Basically, look at it like a skeleton. You're putting down the skeleton for the rest of the thing that you're going to build on top of it. So that's pretty good for my bottom layer right there. Um, now when we come back, I will be filling in. I will be putting some pointier pieces in here. I am going to scoot those in just a little because I forgot about the pointy pieces. I don't want it to be too spread out. So we'll scoot these in just a little. Because I'll, I'll do some really sharp pointy pieces sticking out the end there so it looks like the points on a cross. Um, but we're going to let this bottom layer dry up um, overnight. And when you can pick this up in the morning and your glue and nothing falls off, then you know you're dried good enough. Uh, if not, stick them back down and wait a little bit longer. You do not want your pieces falling off, okay? So um, go do that and then come on back and we'll finish it up. We'll, well, we'll keep on. It, it's a process. We'll okay, so it's the next morning and um, this is dried well. As you can see, if I pick it up, nothing, um, you know, nothing falls off. So that's what we want. So now we're going to start filling in and you can make this as full or as non-full as you want it to be. Let me grab one that I've done before so you can see. Okay, so this is one of the previous ones that I've done before with blue and green and yellow alcohol inks. Um, and this one's pretty full. You know, you can see I filled in a lot in the middle and I just uh, do it till I think it looks good. Um, and you got to make sure it fits the frame too. So that's one. So we'll see how this one turns out. They all turn out different. They're a lot of fun to make. Um, okay, so for these middle fill-in pieces, um, I just kind of just experiment here with what I've got. So, you know, I like it to be 3D and to kind of stand up a little. See, that piece looks good right there. Um, and some of these little ones we can even put out here. But I do like to do the really twisted up pieces too on the inside. So let me see what I have here. And I'll show you what I mean. So this one's kind of that way. I like to do these as points on the um, edges of the cross. But that one's really not a good example. Let me see if I can find another one here. I know I've got some. It's just that my basket of... These twisted up ones is so full where I just got back from a big 
beach trip and found a bunch. Here's a pretty one. See, that looks pretty in there. And it kind of gives a point to the, you know, the edge there of the, of the cross. So this one I'm going to lay right here because I'll probably end up using it. Here's another really pretty one. See, that could go in there or it could even go in there. That would be pretty right there. That would be really pretty. I may do that one there and this one here. I kind of do like that, just about like that. So I'm just going to glue, same thing as we did yesterday. We're just gluing them down. Um, you just want to try to secure it. And believe it or not, this will have to sit and dry another day or so before we can actually move on after we put on this layer. So, you know, this does take a little time to do, but it turns out very pretty. Um, it's definitely worth the effort. <laughs> And if you have a friend who um, is of the faith or, you know, likes crosses or whatever, um, this makes a fantastic gift because it's definitely one of a kind. Nobody else is going to have the same thing that you're giving them. I'm going to put that one in there. I like that. And sometimes I will do this with the glue. I'll just pour it over the top um, of, you know, so I know that that one will secure in there. And this is what I do. So I'm just continuing to go around with these little um, pointed ones, twisty ones. And I may even do, see that's kind of loose, that one is, see it moving? So I need to get it glued down a little better, but I may do, I probably will do that. I like the way that fits in there, right like that, okay? Um, and then here's another one that's really twisty. So, you know, this is how I do it. I just fill in. Now, I kind of want something over here a little wider, I think. And you can lay them in here, too. It looks really pretty. You know, you want we're going to fill in this middle, so it just depends on how soon you want to start doing it. Like, that looks really good right there. I think I'll go with that. Just like that. Okay. Oh, this one's pretty. Let's see what we can do with it. I also, um, a lot of times, will do down here, you know, fill in a couple here on the sides. You can or you don't have to. It's totally your own creative control how you want to do this. Kind of like that in there. Ooh, I kind of like it up there, too. And you can fill this all in or you can leave like these sides. I might leave the sides open on this one because I've filled in on all of my previous ones. I've really filled them in a lot. I may make this one just a little bit less full. That's pretty right there. Yeah, we may do that. Okay. So this is how I do it. And I just continue to fill in these spots here. Just till I get it like I like it. And I'll see he's loose because I haven't he hasn't had time to dry it. So that's kind of what you have to be careful of. Um, you don't want to move the ones that you already have on here too much. That looks good like that. Kind of like that, like that. I might do that. Whoops. So what you do when you get to a point where you feel like that maybe, you know, like this one's going to move if I put something on top of it, this one's going to move if I, when you get to that point, then you have to stop and again, um, let it dry overnight. So this is, you know, it takes a few days to get one of these done, but they turn out so pretty. And I did one with purple alcohol inks that just turned out gorgeous. I gave it away already, <laughs> but, um. I give a lot of them away, but it was really, really pretty. I like that right there. And you can take the glue like this too. Like I said, this glue is not going to show when we're finished. So if you need to take it, put it over top of the, some of these pieces so that it glues them down, then just be liberal with the glue. And if you're using the clear glue, let me say that. If you're using white glue, don't be liberal with the glue. <laughs> so the white glue will show. But your clear glue won't. 
when you're finished. It's pretty right there. Ooh, I like it right there too, and I also like it right there. So that's what I do. I just kind of go along, um, put them where I think they look good. I really kind of like that one peeking out from there. And it's a layering thing. Let's see what we've got. Look at this one. This one's really cool. What can I do with it? Maybe nothing on this cross, but another one. I may put it right there. I kind of like it right there. I feel like I need something like this over here, though. Something kind of wide. Just to balance that out. Like that. Ooh, that looks good. That's pretty perfect right there. Okay, I'm just going to set that in there. Just kind of balance you. You want to kind of keep things even if you can. It's not always possible, but I really do like this twisty one. I could use it on a different cross, but... I like it a lot. It's kind of pretty right there, too. Right there. I don't know how full I'm going to make this one. Let me lay that right there, because I really do like that piece. See, now this little piece, I will probably take my running pliers and just break this off, this little snaggle down here. Oh, that broke the whole thing. Well, that's kind of cool. It <laughs> made it into two. <laughs> Kind of like that actually. This could go in here. That'd be really pretty right there. Let's pour some glue over top. And this little twisty piece is cute. I don't know where I'll put it. But maybe not use it on this one even, but that's cute. Let's lay it there. So um, that's what I'm going to continue doing. I'm just going to continue placing these until I get the middle filled in. Or until I come to a point where I feel like that it's moving the ones underneath and I don't want to do that. Uh, so then I will let it dry again overnight. So that one I'm going to put right there. Let's see if we have another. Here's a pretty one that could go right there or right here. I, think I like it better right there. Okay, just like that. Um... Let's see. And see now, when I put this one on, it's moving this one. I don't really want to do that. And it's also moving these, but I like it right there. So I'm just going to lay it on there as gently as I can. Just like that. And then I need another one right here to kind of balance it out. That was too big. This one might work. That one, I think, is a tad too small. This guy's flopping around all over the place. Maybe he's better over here. Yeah, he may be better right there. I'll we'll try that and see. And then, what about this one right here? That needs to set up more to match this one. And the good thing with this glue is if you don't like the way it's looking, you can obviously shift it around and remove pieces and all kinds of stuff until they dry. So that's the good thing about using the clear Elmer glue. I'm not liking the way that that's looking though. Let me see what else I have that might work in there. What about this one? Whoops. What about this guy right here? I think maybe this one is what's bothering me. No, maybe not. <laughs> okay, let me lay those there like this, and then if I take one and put it right here. That's what we needed. We just needed to fill in another one, but that one might be a little big. Let's try this one. I like that, but I want to switch these so that all the brown wasn't side by side right there. Let's see if this will work. Everything's flopping around now. I'm definitely going to have to let it sit and dry for a while. 
getting a little too floppy floppy. All right, well, I'm not liking that. Let's try this guy. What's he look like here? Don't really like that either. Sometimes you have to sit and really uh, try different things. Now that's pretty. I could get this guy to come up a little and maybe that one right there. That looks good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this glue because I have so much flopping around here. I'm just going to kind of pour it over in the middle and I'm not going to move anything else. I'm going to pretty much leave it like that and let it dry overnight. And then we'll come back tomorrow. We'll fill in a few extra spots and then we'll be ready to um, pour our resin. Okay, so come on back tomorrow after yours dries. Get off um, part of it, but this one does look really pretty right there. And see, I'd have to take my running pliers. Which I have to away. Hold on. Or my plier here. This plier would work too. And kind of break these outer pieces off and you have to be really careful because these can definitely cut you <laughs> and they hurt when they do so just it's probably best to wear gloves I never do but probably best to okay see I may have just cut myself I did just cut myself right there now I'm bleeding see be careful don't do what I do okay um and so this kind of look at it and see if it'll lay in there now it really doesn't want to lay very flat I really need to get all that off but it's super hard <laughs> um, let's see what else I have here <laughs> got this piece that's kind of cute that would work I don't want it to look like it has a belly button though that's kind of what it's looking like uh, let's see what else we've got I don't have as many button tops as I used to. I lost some of them, I think. I don't know where they went. I used to have a whole bunch of them. There's a piece of coral. I don't know why it's in the button top thing, but you could just about put anything you wanted in the middle. Oh, here's a good one. Look at that one. That That's the one. There it is. You just have to find it. <laughs> that's the right one. So he needs to go right in the middle. Whoops. I'm just going to put glue around. Like I said, I'm very liberal with the glue. I want it to stay. We're going to pour resin over it, so it's going to stay. But, you know, I like to feel like it's secure anyway. So then I'll pour some glue down around it here just to give it. That's not really dry, I don't think. It's moving around. So let's put some glue down in there. You just, you really want a lot of glue. <laughs> The glue's not going to show, like I said, so you don't have to worry about it. Okay. So that is looking pretty good. I like that button top in the middle. And it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to leave it to dry um, now that we've added on. I think that's everything that I want to add to it. Um, I kind of try to pick it up a little and look just to make sure that it looks even it does look pretty even it could use something right there just because of that piece um, let me see if i have something that would look good in there um, actually that does that looks pretty good. I'm going to go with that. Just kind of stick it under there. And like I said, it doesn't have to be exactly equal with the other one. This can kind of come out. Well, maybe. I thought it looked good, but maybe it's... I think the twisty part there, that needs to show. That's better. Stand that up and see. Yeah, that's going to be good. Now this little guy's sliding out. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to leave it here to dry. And we will come back and be ready to pour okay. resin in a bit. So I am back and we're getting ready to do some resin. 
for some resin. So huh, let's see. Let me show you what I've got here. I have this little piece. It's kind of hard to see everything I know, I, but this camera, I'm like, how do I do this? <laughs> how do I get this whole table? <laughs> but this is just a flower picture. Then I've got this one, which I can't really tilt up because it's kind of got stuff that's not glued down yet, but it's just kind of a shell, beachy, abstract sort of picture with glass and pearls. Okay, I've got the cross that we've worked on one and I have got this seahorse and the seaweed this is going to be seaweed this glass is going to come up like this but it hasn't been glued down either um, but the seahorse has so that is a seahorse okay and then I've got a bunch of trays so I buy these trays these little trays at the Dollar Tree and I paint them and then I glue these little stickers, tile stickers down in the bottom, and then I resin over top of them, and it makes a really cute little trinket tray. And I'm gonna be doing a craft show in November, so I'm gonna resin up a bunch of these to sell. Okay, so that's what we're resining today. So um, the next things that I have are, of course, my resin. This is um, Clearcast 7000. It is a one-to-one -one, um, part resin which means you mix it equal parts a and b this is part a this is part b the hardener and this is um by the epoxy resin store and that's what i'm going to be using at least for some of it i don't know if that's going to be enough i'm almost out of it i have two cups one for the hardener one for the resin and i might actually get a bigger cup hold on depending on let's see oh they're over here Sorry, I'm crawling in the floor. Yeah, there it is. Okay, depending on um, how much that is, I will put it in this cup, which needs some tape used on the inside of it. So I'll show you that here too in a minute, how to clean your, apparently I didn't clean this one last time I poured. Okay, but there's that. This is just a silicone cup, it's big. These I get at the Dollar Tree. This I get on Amazon and it's just big enough to hold a larger capacity for when I'm pouring something big like this. Um, I have a silicone stir stick that like the other, like this cup here has not been <laughs> cleaned off, but I'll show you what I do here to clean these off. I'm gonna use um, tape to do it and it works pretty good if you don't already have it done. Um, I have some little pokey sticks and things here. These have a silicone tip. Um, these, this end's not silicone, so you want to wash, wipe that off after you use it. And I have some plastic spoons that I get at the Dollar Tree. This is a little vacuum. I got this on Timu. I love this thing. It's a little tabletop back. And what I will do is I'll go over this, just with this, before I pour the resin. And all that's going to do is pick up any little dust particles or something. So I'll do this one. Um... Now, with this cross, I'm gonna be pouring alcohol inks in the background, so it's not a huge deal if it has something on it. Like, it's got a little paint here on the, on the um, glass that I can't get off. It's because it's, the glass is chipped a little right there. Not that it's gonna, it won't show, but I can't get that paint off, so I'm just going to um, just go ahead and, um, resin right over top of it, and then when I pour the alcohol inks, it will cover that up. So that won't show at all. Um, and I just try to get off any dust or anything. This one, I'm just gonna run it around the top here. And I'll just make sure that I, you know, just check them, you wanna check them for any pieces of debris in there. A lot of times I get down like this and look at them. I get a flashlight sometimes and look at them. You want them to not have anything like that. I may put alcohol inks in this one too, I've kind of decided. But this is my little handy dandy tabletop back, I love it. I have a roll of paper towels that is completely and totally necessary. And I have my purple alcohol inks here. These are all different brands. I've got Tim Holtz, is this Tim Holtz? Uh, yeah, Tim Holtz. I've got Let's Resin, um, some other Let's Resin, and some off-brand, this one is, I have no idea what this even is. I don't even think it has a name on it. 
<laughs> but anyway, those are all different shades of purple alcoholics. Um, I have on old clothes. Let me say that. I've got my Rainforest Cafe t-shirt on and my shorts. This old clothes that I don't mind getting something on because inevitably I get resin on them and it's bad. And if you're bad to get it in your hair, pull your hair back because trust me, it's not fun. When you have dried resin in your hair, it's not fun. <laughs> okay, so I think that's everything that we're going to need. A couple of these we're going to do in stages. This one I'm going to do in stages. So what I will do is I will pour the resin over it, let it um, harden, and then tomorrow I'll pour another layer and put the alcohol inks in that layer. And the reason I, well, you know what, I don't know that it's going to make much difference. No, I'm probably not going to do that for this one. I don't know. We'll see. It, it just, it changes with every project. <laughs> now these are little glass bits that I just got on the side. It's no big deal. But, okay. So, see, not everything is glued down here. And I want to make sure, actually, not, is none of this glued? No, none of that's glued down. Dang, I thought it was. I thought I had glued that, but apparently I did not. So, I'm just going to take it. It's been laying here on this table. And just kind of make sure that things lay like I want them to. So, and really, the way that I have it is pretty much exactly how I want it to be. I just needed to make sure that nothing got moved too much okay so that's that one all right so i'm gonna go ahead mix up the resin here Ooh. these tablecloths i get from the dollar tree as well they're awesome let me move this guy out of the way for a minute and this guy out of the way just so i can mix the resin and you can see me do it oh the tape let me get the tape so i can show you how to clean these cups okay so this is just clear packing tape this is what I use to seal up my packages that go out from my website. And I'm just going to, well, it's not wanting to come off in one strip. Don't you hate that about packing tape? Probably do. But, you know, if you get one little, okay, see, like that. Well, I'm going to pull this off. And I'm going to double this up, like, you know, with all the sticky part on the outside, stick it to itself. And then all you do is take it and go over this on the inside and pick up, you know, whatever little pieces are loose. Um, the thing with resin is it is resistant to water. So alcohol works to clean it up. And I do have a bottle of alcohol, a spray bottle of alcohol here. If I have a mistake, a mishap or something, I'll just clean it up with that. Baby wipes also work really well to clean it up. So you can wipe these things out with your, uh, you can spray them with alcohol and wipe them out. You can use your baby wipes, whatever you want to do, but you just don't want there to be loose pieces in here. See like that piece? Because then it's going to come out in your project and you don't want that. So let me grab my alcohol here. And I'm just going to grab a paper towel. I'm just going to spray this down really good on the inside with the alcohol. Wipe it out with the paper towel. You're just trying to get any sticky resin or loose pieces out. And see the loose pieces come out on here. It's hard to get them all out. Um, sometimes I'll take it and just kind of scrape them out like this onto the table. <laughs> and then I'll use my little back to get them. But it is really hard to get them all out because they just they are very stubborn in there. Um, and so I'll do this and rub it together, turn it over, shake it out, and you can use your fingernails, but you have to be really careful doing that, because if one of these goes up under your nails, whew, believe me, that's a painful thing right there. Okay, so I've sprayed it with alcohol, wiped it down, let me do the tape thing again, just to get any loose pieces, I can find the end of the stuff. Usually cut out with my teeth. I usually have scissors, but I don't know what I did with my scissors, and I don't feel like going and finding them right now. That's Sadie. Sadie's walking by. Hey, 
can oh, I'll take it off. Okay. So again, I'm just going in here with the tape, getting all the little pieces out that will come off. And then I'm not going to worry too much about it because all of these projects, pretty much, are going to have alcohol inks poured in or uh, they've got a bunch of glass and stuff so the resin is really not going to show if there is a little bit of this stuff in there. But I think I got most of it. A lot, some of it stuck, sticks and won't come out. So when that happens, it's just, there's nothing you can do about it. All right, so let's get that out of the way. Let's get some paper towels ready. <laughs> Always good to have some paper towels ready. And I'm going to go ahead and um, mix my resin. So I'm going to need every bit of this, I know. So, but I do, I may mix it in two different batches. We'll have to see how much the cup holds. So let me go ahead and pour this part A. But yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to need every bit of this resin. don't want to get this cup too full. So let's do that. And then I'm going to do the part B and the way I do it is I set it right beside it, making sure that, you know, my surface is level. And I'm just going to pour my part B equal to my part A. I want to do because you can kind of get down and eyeball it. That looks great. Okay, so this is actually part B. I need to remember this cup had part B and this cup has part A. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pour part B in here, scrape it out. You want to scrape your cup and get as much out as you possibly can. You don't want to waste it because it's expensive. Or a part B. Now resin does not set up until it's mixed together and the chemical attraction occurs or chemical attraction yeah chemical reaction <laughs> occurs so um, I'm gonna set this cup over by my part A so that way I know if I have to pour more that I'll use that cup here's my part B going in this is a lot thicker than the part A and you want to really make sure that you get everything out of the cup that you possibly can. See how full my big cup is? So I'm just making sure I get this all out. Now when I'm finished with these cups, I throw them out. They're like $1.25 for a bunch at the Dollar Tree and you could try to recycle them, but I think it's more trouble than it's worth. Um, so I just, when I go to the Dollar Tree, I'll pick up a couple packages of these um, and just, you know, I keep them for this specific purpose. You want to get all of it out that you can, okay? So I'm just trying to scrape. I don't use gloves. I know somebody's going to be on here and be like, gloves, you need gloves. No, I don't use gloves with resin. I've never had a problem. I guess if you're sensitive, you might. Um, so, you know, you got to do whatever works for you. I don't use a respirator. I'm in a huge room uh, with a lot of ventilation. There's no doors to this room, so it's all open. I don't feel like that I am asphyxiating <laughs> or anything like that. So, um, I don't do well with gloves. It messes me up. It just deals, it um, takes away the sensitivity in my hands because of a wreck I had years ago and I just can't can't do the gloves thing. So, all right, here we go. Now we're gonna mix. Now, it is impossible not to get any bubbles in this resin, okay? But you do want to mix slowly, and it starts out. Um, you'll see this cloudiness. So let me see if I can hold it up here without spilling the whole thing. So not sure if you can see it. It is very cloudy, okay? There's a See that cloudiness in there? That is the chemical reaction starting. That's the resin, you know, doing its thing. And you have got to stir it until that is no longer there, until you see no more cloudiness, it is perfectly clear, OK? 
Okay, so I'm gonna set it back down here so I won't spill it everywhere. And you wanna scrape the sides, you wanna scrape the bottom. One reason that I pour the thinner uh, resin in, the thinner part, before I do the really thick part is because if you pour the thicker part in first, it sticks to all the sides and it's hard to get it mixed really well. If you pour the thinner part in first and then add your thicker part, then it just tends to mix up easier, okay? It really does, so, but it takes a while. You have to mix this for a little while. Um, probably, I don't know, after it's clear and there's no more cloudiness in it, I still mix it for just a couple minutes just to be sure. You can read the directions on the resin. Um, I don't really, you know, there's, I'm sure it says like mix for five minutes or whatever, but I just, I know that you have to mix it until the resin is clear. So I do that. And then after that, I just mix it a little bit longer. It's not when I hurt it, you know, um, just to make sure that it's all mixed up. So you just, when you know that it's mixed really, really well, then you're in good shape, okay? So I'm going to continue mixing. Um, It'll take a little while because this is a pretty big amount to get this completely clear. So I'm gonna keep on mixing and I'll be right back. Still mixing, but <clears throat> wanted to tell y'all a couple more things. So um, about the respirator and stuff, if you are sensitive, like if you have asthma or you know bronchial issues or anything like that, you may wanna consider wearing a mask of some sort. Um, I've never had a problem I don't smell very well for some reason. My nose has never worked very well, so I can't even smell this resin. Um, and it, like I said, this room is very well ventilated, and um, I have a fan actually blowing over there, so I'm not worried about that. Um, and as far as the gloves go, you know, I'm going to wash my hands right afterwards. I'm going to spray them with the alcohol, clean them off, and then wash them really good. So, you know, I've never had a problem with this resin bothering my skin or anything like that. If I get it on me, I just wipe it off with a paper towel. So um, I just don't do the glove thing. But you know, if you need to, by all means, <laughs> do what you gotta do. I am not the boss of you, so you do what you gotta do. Um, so I am mixing this up, still mixing. Uh, you will see bubbles in it. It is impossible to mix this without getting some bubbles in it, but you don't wanna whip it like a cake. You know, try to kind of be gentle. Um, when you're pouring alcohol inks in it, it's, you know, not such a big deal to have some micro bubbles because they're not going to show in what we're doing. They're not. Now, if you're doing jewelry or something, that's different, but, um, they're not really going to show in what we're getting ready to do. Um, so, and these are ocean, well, that one's ocean and this one too. So, you know, I don't freak out. It's easy to get the bubbles out though. If you get some bubbles in there, don't freak out. It's very easy to get them out. I will show you how. So I'm still stirring. I can still see some striations in here. Um, just little, most of the cloudiness is gone. Okay, see how clear it's getting? But I can see, still see some little striations. So I want to stir it until I can't see any type of, you know, anything, till it just looks like a clear liquid, or in this case, a little bit yellowy liquid. I don't know the, my, um, this one hardener or, yeah the hardener looks kind of yellow and resin does that over time there's really no resin that doesn't but when we pour the alcohol inks in and stuff you're not going to be able to see that it's even you know it won't make it won't matter one thing about these um projects i put all these up on my website for sale i do tell people it's best not to keep them in the sun like you don't want to hang these in a sunny window okay now with the alcohol inks in them it's not a big deal but the clear ones you don't really want to hang in a sunny window because resin and sun, it's just, it's not the best thing for it. Um, and you know, it'll last a lot longer and be really pretty for years if you don't put it in the sun. <laughs> so don't do that. <laughs> All right. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. Mixed up pretty well here. Very clear now. I do have a few bubbles, but no big deal. And there's not a lot of striation. So I'm going to clean off my little thing here. And I am going to take a paper towel and clean it off because I'm really bad about not cleaning up right as I'm doing it. But if you do this right now, it just makes your cleanup later so much easier. So like I have not done that very well in the past, but I'm making a, I'm turning over a new tree today. Okay. 
Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my grill lighter and I'm just going to pop any bubbles that are on the top. You just go over it quickly. You don't sit on it in any spot. You don't want to burn any. You're just going over it really quickly. That will get the pop bubbles popped that are on the top. If you want, you can set this in a pan of warm water. That will cause the bubbles to rise. If I sit here and do this for a minute, this causes the bubbles to rise on top. So that's just how I do it. If you set, I have set it in a pan of warm water before, you can do that, and it does cause the bubbles to come up, but I don't, I mean, this works just as well. I would do that if I had a ton of bubbles in here or they were big ones or something, but I don't need to with this one. Okay, so now I've got my spoon here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start with uh, I'm going to start with my cross because I need um, the alcohol links. I need this resin to be a little bit, not solid, but I need it to be uh, a little thicker before I pour my alcohol inks in. So here's what I do. I take the spoon and carefully, you want to drip this all over your frame. I start in the middle and I just start dripping it over. Let me, I know that... This is not a close camera shot, and I'm sorry, but there's really no other way that I can do this. I'm used to filming jewelry now. See, I just got it on my frame. If you get it on your frame, just immediately wipe it off. It's not a huge deal, but try not to. And so I'm just going with the spoon and just drizzling it over the middle. And the reason that I do this is it gets all these shells really shiny and pretty. And then when it dries, they dry really shiny and pretty. And it will flow down. It's not going to like lay in here. It's going to flow down onto your piece. And I just make sure that I coat all the shells. Another reason for doing that is it keeps them together. If one is loose or, you know, the glue would come loose on the one, it would be coated in the resin and it's not going to fall off here. This resin, once it dries, nothing's coming off. <laughs> if you wanted it to come off, it wouldn't. So that's the thing. So we're just continuing to put the resin on and like I said I'm just going to coat all the shells. It's important that your table is level and as you can see on this one I have put um, painters tape on the back of it. I do that on all of mine usually but for some reason I got distracted on the seahorse and this flower one over here and forgot. And I may still do it because the flower one's completely glued down. So I may go ahead and put the painter's tape on the flower one. The seahorse, I guess I could dump the green glass and do it and then put the green glass back on because it's not that much. And I may do that because you really do not want your resin leaking on through the back. It, it just causes a lot of problems when that happens. Um, you have a mess. So now that I've got the entire cross covered pretty well, I'm just taking the resin. I am going to... Make sure that it's touching all of the sides and going into all of the corners of my frame. I don't want there to be any place that doesn't have resin in it. And this is where you'll be able to tell if your table's level. Mine sometimes is and sometimes isn't. I don't know why. I try to level it and then sometimes it will, um, I guess it gets knocked or moved or whatever, but sometimes I end up having to put a couple popsicle sticks under my my projects just to keep it level. Okay. So just going through here, making sure that it's getting into all the corners. You don't need a huge thick amount, okay? You just need a thin layer. You don't need, you know, to have a ton of it in here. Just a thin layer that covers the whole frame. And you do want it to cover everything. You don't want any spots where there's no resin. So you've got to have your layer thick enough for that. But, you know, it doesn't need to be super thick for this. Okay. So with that, maybe just a little bit more here. That looks pretty good. Okay. So I'm 
just making sure that it's touching the glass all the way around the frame. It's all the way to the edges. Just a little bit more in this corner because it's kind of okay. So now I do have some bubbles. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my lighter and very carefully, not like I said, not holding it in one place for any length of time. Go over and get the bubbles out, and you can see them pop. And there will be more that develop. You just you have to do this every few minutes the whole time you're doing this. And even after you're done, I come back every little bit and pop the bubbles just because you don't want a bunch of bubbles in there. I mean, the alcohol inks will hide a lot of them, but still. So I'm just going over it all. It pops all the little bubbles that are on the surface. And like I said, don't stay in one place for any length of time. You just, you go quickly, okay? Like this. Now, um, if you see any flecks of things that you don't want in there, you can take your, um, a Q-tip or, you know, your little poker peep thing that I have there and you can try to get it out. Um, I'm just gonna just make sure that it's all... Okay, so there's that. Now we're gonna let that sit a little while because I need it to get a little harder before I resin. I mean, before I pour the alcohol. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one, and honestly, I think this is glued down. Oh, you know what? Maybe not. I don't want to take the chance. So I'm going to dump my glass here. It's not hard to get that. I mean, I'm just laying the glass back on there. I'm going to turn this upside down and gently, I don't want to mess up my shelves, but I'm going to use my painter's tape and go around here so it doesn't leak out. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the painter's tape on this. I just make sure that it's pressed down on the back really good and up into the corners if I can. It's just to keep it from leaking, like if it would leak the brew, it'll keep it from getting all over your project. Okay, so now we're going to take our green glass. And actually, I'm going to pour the resin first. So let's scoot him over here. And him over here so we can try to get you as close as I can to see what I'll do. And that one I'm gonna go ahead and take my flame over again just to get out any more bubbles. Just come to the surface. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with this, but I'm going to go grab a little bit more of this. I think I might need some more of this glass. Okay, so this glass comes from the Dollar Tree, and it's $1.25 for quite a bit. It's pretty nice. All right, so I'm just going to take this, same thing I did over there. Just going to drizzle it right over my seahorse. I want to make sure that I get him good and resined. Grab my chair here. Get that out of the way. I try to keep my table as clean as I can keep it, but let me shut the bedroom door for a minute. I don't know why, but Alexa started playing gyre by Maverick City Music <laughs> in the bedroom. Chris is not even in there, so I don't know what she's thinking, but I love the song, but yeah, I can't. It was a little loud, and I don't want to get a copyright strike. <laughs> Maverick City, please don't copyright strike me. I think Chris is just having his praise and worship moment <laughs> in the other room or something. So. Okay, if you get any resin on the frame, just wipe it off while you can. And see, I've already gone through all those napkins. So, this is why I coat my table with these tablecloths too. These um, little Dollar Tree tablecloths. They are inexpensive and that way I don't have to worry about 
you know, trying not to get things on my table or finding some cheaper way to cover it. This is really cheap, $1.25 for a tablecloth. And this lasts for a long time. You just leave it on here until it gets so bad you can't stand it anymore. And then you pull it off and put another one on. Super easy. All right. So now I've got the seahorse pretty much covered and I'm just gonna do my outskirts here. And what, like I said before, you don't need a huge thick layer, but you do want all of the frame covered. You don't want, I mean, all of the glass covered. You don't want it not touching anywhere. For the song Gyra by Ma Maverick City Music. If you haven't heard it, oh my goodness, it is so good. And I'll tell you what Jehovah Jireh means. Um, the God who will provide, but it's not just the God who will provide, it's the God who will provide what we need. So, you know, for all those people out there that want to say, well, I asked God for such and such and he didn't give it to me. Well, it's because you didn't need it. <laughs> Um, he provides what we need if we trust him to do it, and that's in every circumstance. It doesn't matter. You know, I can't explain everything why there are some people that want a child and can't have a child, but this is what I do know. God is good. He is intrinsically good. There's nothing bad in him. He can't be bad, and the Bible says that he is working for our good. Every circumstance, he works all things together for our good. So we have to trust, even when we don't understand what's going on in our lives, or why he doesn't provide something that we ask for. We still have to trust that he knows what's best for us. And trust me, it's a better way to live life than being angry at God. <laughs> Much better way of living life to trust that he loves us, he's taking care of us, he knows what's best for us. And as the song, old song says, it is well with my soul. Let it be well with your soul and trust God and you will be a much happier person in the long run. Trust me, I've been there in both ways. <laughs> but that song, Jaira, is so good. Talks about that. Provide a God that provides. All right, so let's get the bubbles out of this. Same as we did on the other one. I just go over it carefully. And you can see the bubbles pop. I mean, it's not hard to, to get them all out. Now on this one, I'm not going to have alcohol inks, and I don't think, I thought about it, but I'm not sure. Um, I may do a few. It would be kind of cool, I guess, but I don't want them to mess up the seahorse colors. So I don't know, but I am gonna put some of this glass in here trying to make it look like seaweed. So we'll, we'll see what we end up doing. Let me get that. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my glass and I start at the bottom here. I'm just sprinkling it on. Hope you guys can see. I know that it's not the best setup, but all I've got at the moment. So we're just sprinkling it on here. And then I'm going to just come up like this and not doing it in necessarily a straight line, just kind of that I still want it to look like it's coming up in straight. And I don't want it just to be green all over. So I want it to look kind of like seaweed coming up. So I want to keep it together in places, but I still want it to look kind of wavy and, you know, just like it's. I'm just using my little tool here to move the glass around. Okay. And now I hear Charity Gale in there. She's another really good one. You want some uplifting songs? Listen to 
listen to Charity Gale, listen to Maverick City Music. Good stuff, people. With the world the way it is today and all the negativity, I don't know why anybody wants to listen to much of anything except for something glorifying God. <laughs> I can't. You know, I just, you got to get through this life somehow. And that, to me, is the best way to do it. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied, she's singing. Oh, yeah. Great, great song. All right, so we've got some seaweed going up here. It's really pretty. I don't think I'm going to do the alcoholics in this one because I don't want to uh, end up, you know, doing too much. This is going to be pretty. looking pretty good and now I'm just gonna let's see look every time I lay that down it <laughs> burns to the table to the cloth hey I'm just gonna take this and go over really well I want to get out any bubbles that I can and if there's something in there that I don't want to be in there like a fuzz or you know a speck or whatever I want to get that out too now one thing is that my resin now has been um, in its mixed state for a few minutes. So it's going to start kind of getting harder, or, you know, getting thicker. So I need to kind of work quick. I'm going to add a few more of this green glass here on the bottom. I'm going to kind of thick at the bottom so it looks like seaweed on the bottom growing up on the bottom of the ocean. Okay. And then as it kind of trails up, it looks it's pretty. I like the way this is turning out. Okay. So we're going to let that guy sit for a minute. I'm going to run over this one one more time, and this is the thing. You want to keep going over it with your flame. You want any bubbles that you can get out just to get out. Like I said, with the alcohol inks, it's not going to be a huge deal, but I don't want them in there if I can get them out. All right, so this guy's looking good. Now we're going to work on this one. Let's scoop these down. This guy down here. Now, he's going to be real easy because... I'm just going to pour over top of the whole thing here. And there's so much mixed in on this one that it's really not going to be a problem with bubbles and stuff like that. But I do need to get over all the shells. So that's important. Over these starfish because none of these are glued on. I usually glue stuff down, but I didn't do it on this one. Just because I didn't really need to, they're just laying and I can move them around as I pour the resin. And I don't want to pour too vigorously. Number one, I don't want too much on here. You don't need a huge thick layer. But I also don't want it moving things too much. So I'm just kind of gently making sure that I get over all of the shells and that they're coated really well. Down here, and it'll make your shells really shiny and pretty when you get the resin over them. And then I'm just going to make sure, like I have been doing, that it is on the all the way to the edges, all the way around. I don't know why that starfish is turning pink. It's kind of turning pink when I pour the resin over both of them. All. Not sure about that, but okay. <laughs> so 
this one is going to end up taking the re pretty much the rest of this resin, and I'm going to have to mix up more, which I thought I would, but that's okay. And you just have to make sure that you get all the way to your edges and that everything is covered. That's what's important at this. I'm going to scrape the resin out of here. Now, I'm going to move anything around that needs moved around and make sure, and sometimes what I will do is I will tip this, just making sure that the resin runs into every corner. You see, it's not working to tip it right there because it's going up on the edges here, which I don't want it to do that, so I'm going to get that off. But it needs to go up in this corner, so sometimes you just have to take it and Especially if you have used all your red and get a little bit more out of here. But you just want it, you want to make sure that every corner is filled and the resin touches the edges all the way around your frame. Okay. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just making sure that it's to the edge all the way around. Even if it's just a thin layer, it doesn't have to be thick, but it does have to cover all of it. Okay. Okay. Another really good song, if you guys are looking for good praise and worship songs, is Goodness of God by Jen Johnson. Oh, that's one of my favorites. I love that song so much. I play it all the time. Okay, so now I'm just going to make sure that everything is where I want it to lay. And with the pearls, I try to spin them so the hole doesn't show, but I may not be able to get them all, but I try to do that. I don't really want the hole to show. And they tend to want to orient themselves that way. So if you see the hole showing, just try to spin it. Like this. really good this is pretty okay so now I'm gonna take my torch again now this one I don't want to hover because it's very um you know you don't want to burn your shells and make them look like they're cooked <laughs> so just go quickly this one's not as big of a deal if it has some bubbles in it because it's got so much floating around the edges you know glass and glass glitter and all kinds of stuff if you watch me make this one um, I'll I can't remember if I did a separate video or I don't know how it'll work out, but I've like done a bunch of videos um, lately. But um, yeah, I, got, I used glass glitter, the glass from the Dollar Tree, the shells, and uh, you just want to, but there's a lot in this one, so you don't have to worry too much about, you know, if there's little bubbles in here, they're really not going to show up all that much, but I still don't want, you know, I don't want it to look like. There's a, a bunch of bubbles in it. All right, so let's go ahead over him again. Okay, and let's go ahead over this one again on the end. Can you still see? Yeah. All right, now, um, see, I burned the edges of this shell on here, and I don't really want to do that. If you burn the edges of your shell, try to wipe it off. We're going to pour alcohol in on this one. So. But you got to go pretty quickly with that flame. All right. Everything else is looking pretty good. So I am going to go ahead and let's see. So this guy I need to look at. He had some floaties in there. 
So I'm just going to come in and look really closely. If I see anything that I can get off, any fuzz or floaties, some of it may be on the back of my glass and I'll, it'll clean off after we're done. But I just want to make sure that there's nothing in there major that you know, I can just scrape or that's floating on this side that I can get out. So if you see any little dark spots or any fuzzes or anything like that, just use your little tool and try to get them out. This is when you want to do it. Because once your resin sets up, that's it. Nothing's coming out <laughs> if it's in there. Is not coming out. That one must be on the other side of the glass. And some of them are on the other side of the glass, but I just want to make sure I get out any that are on this side. That one's on the other side. Okay. And sometimes this glass from the Dollar Tree will have um, some little pieces, like micro pieces of glass that look like little pieces of fuzz or something. So kind of have to just be careful that you get those out if you can. All right, everything's looking good at this point. So I've still got to do this guy, this little flower one, and all of my trays. So I'm going to mix up some more resin. I'm going to pour, uh, I'll mix up some more resin and then I'll come back. Okay, well I have got my resin dripping into the cups. <laughs> um, the bottles are turned upside down sitting on the cup. But I need to pour the alcohol ring. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to start with Amethyst. Um, this is by Tim Holtz. I want to make sure you open this away from your other projects so it doesn't, nothing drips in them. Sometimes it'll flex and it will go places. Okay, and I'm just going to start in the corners and I'm going to do one small drop of each one of these, of this color, in the very corners. Now, I want to try to keep this kind of balance, okay? So I'm, I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to take, um, what color do I want to use? I'm going to use this deep purple. That's a kind of a bluish purple, so I'm going to use this deep purple. And I'm going to go right over top of the ones that I did with this one. Okay? And it's just going to start spreading and do its thing. Um, I'm going to go with this little off-brand one because I don't think it, I don't know what color it is, but I don't think that it, um, I mean it's a purple, I'm just not sure what shade. Yeah, it doesn't spread that well. <laughs> I don't know why. This stuff is terrible. So it's I'm just going to put some little dots around a bit. And then when I put the other ones on, hopefully it'll make this one spread a little. I mean, it. this is a terrible brand of alcohol. I have no idea. It doesn't even have a name on it. So it probably came in with something else I bought, some kit or something. Okay, so I just put a few dots of it around. We'll see what happens with that. Um, let's go with this lavender. And I'm going to go over top of some of the dots that I just did of that one, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, see, it kind of makes it spread when I drip another alcohol ink on top of it. I don't know why. So on all of those little dots, I'm going to drip one of these. There we go. And I'll show this to you in a minute. I know you can't see it very good from there. But I have to get it done or it's going to harden on me and be too hard to... Okay, I'm going to take this one and again do it on those little dots because they're still kind of just sinking to the bottom there for some reason, not doing anything. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my first color this one. And I'm just going to go back up it just around several different little spots here. And I'm just trying, if I do it on one spot on one side of the cross, I'm trying to do it on the other side of the cross exactly the same. And I keep dripping that on the 
it. I got it on the frame. You don't want to get it on the frame. <laughs> if you get it on the frame, take your alcohol and try to get it off. Actually, it's getting on the frame in a couple of places. It's getting on the frame over here. Too. Oh, shoot. Okay, well, what this means is I'm going to have to repaint my frame. I'll just touch it up, though. You can just take your brush and touch it up, but it'll have to be redone because I got too much uh, ink on it. Okay, so now I'm going to take this lighter, redder-ish purple and go around and put some of these inside the other ones. Okay, now you can do a couple things here. So, let me see if I can just show you what I've got going on. Here it is. I can take a stick or a toothpick or something and I can swirl and make it pretty. I can take the alcohol and spray on it, which will make it do all kinds of wild stuff. Or I can just leave it and let it do its thing. What I tend to like to do is take a toothpick. Let me grab one. Well, apparently I have no toothpicks out here. I thought I did. I'm going to have to use just my swirly tool here. And I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to swirl it through here a little bit. Just give it some pretty little swirls. I'm just swirling the colors together. And I think this is not letting flat. I'm going to have to. Yeah, apparently my table is again not level. I'm just going to lean this up a little bit so that some of the stuff, the resin flows down to the bottom because it's all up here at the top. I just put something under it, a popsicle stick or my tool there, and let it flow down to the bottom. A lot of these projects, you know, are just kind of trial and error. They're all different. They never turn out the same, and you kind of learn as you go. So, I'm just swirling this one. this again but you do not want to catch this alcohol and become fire and it will so I'm just continuing to do this until I get it the way I want which is pretty close right now all right now I'm going to take the flame and if you do this, you gotta go over it fast. Let me just tell you, you do not want the alcohol to catch on fire. But you do need to go over it because it will have some bubbles in it and you really don't want them to show. Okay. All right, not bad. Now, for these places up here at the top that my um, my frame or my glass was kind of having issues. I just want to make sure that I go over that with the and get the alcohol inks to cover that up. So it pretty much did right there. that 
that's it for a minute. Let's look back at this guy. May need to pop some bubbles here. We'll see. And I'm really tempted to drip a couple blue alcohol inks in here. Really, really tempted to. So I have this really pretty color. Is this it? No, here it is. Laguna. Mm, I think I may. I don't want to mess it up, but I really, really think this would be pretty in it. So I'm just down in the very corner. I'm going to do a little bit. I'm going to do it just along the bottom, I think. And we'll see. It'll kind of go up itself. this will be pretty and if I want it to spread a little more I just take some alcohol and spritz it and that will make it kind of move and I may just do a couple little drips on each of the seaweed strands just I don't want it all over but I do kind of want it down here at the bottom a little bit up toward the, but I want to keep it in the seaweed strands, I think, just like that. Now I'm going to take the alcohol and spray again, and we'll see what it does. My main thing is I don't want to really get it on the seahorse. So I want it to stay, I don't mind it being in there, it's pretty, but I just don't really want it on the seahorse. And I can also take my little tool and I can do something like this, which will make this look like seaweed is kind of coming up here. This might be really pretty. It's going to be really pretty. I know this video is long, but there's really no way to do this short. <laughs> so, sorry. Okay. Okay. Just kind of mixed in the alcohol inks here. And again, I want to kind of keep my seaweed strands together, so I'm just going to make sure that they're not kind of all over the place. Again with the lighter on it because I just got a bunch of bubbles in it doing that. You just want to get out any bubbles that you can see. I mean it is an ocean scene so it's not a huge deal. <laughs> it's got some bubbles but I don't want a whole bunch of big ones or anything. Okay that's looking pretty. This is looking pretty. to the bottom corner now. But I don't really want to take that thing out 
because then they're all gonna go to the top. So I may need to just kind of um, maybe put a thinner. Let me use this spoon. I've got my resin that's pretty much all dripped out into these cups. I'm going to mix it together, and then I'll be right back. All right, so this is mixed up really well. It's clear. It, it you know, feels, doesn't feel thick anymore like it does when you're first mixing it. And I'm just going to take it here and drizzle, just like I've been doing with all the others. Now, I did forget to... I totally forgot to put my painter's tape on this one, so I'm hoping it won't leak. Um, we'll see. But I've got to drizzle over all the shells here to make sure that I get them all under the resin. And again, it doesn't have to be a thick layer. You just need to make sure that it covers everything and goes into all the edges and the corners. And I bet this is going to leak. I hope not, but it may. If it leaks, what I will do is set it up on some stilts. I have some little stilts that I use, and I will set it up on that so that the resin can just drip down and not, and it is leaking. I can see it already out the back. I knew I should have put paper. I forgot on this one. I think it's leaking. I don't know, maybe that's just the glue. Okay, it may not be, all right. Okay, so I'm gonna take my flame and I'm just gonna pop the bubbles real quick in this one. Again, do not linger, you don't wanna burn your shells. These are coquinas. And I know I'm not on camera right now, but I will show you here in a second. Okay, so let me pick this up, scoop this guy over. Put this guy right here so y'all can see what I'm doing. I just poured the resin, same as, you know, dripped it over them, and I'm just getting the bubbles out. That's all I'm doing. Nothing different. Now, this one's clear, pretty clear on the background, so you want to make sure that you get all the bubbles out that you possibly can. And that may require going back over it a few times or taking your little tool and poking them out. And I will show you another thing that I use. And I like this one better, actually. I don't know where to go. Well, it's my torch. And it's my um, torch like they use in restaurants. So let's just have it. <laughs> oh, I see it. Yeah. This actually works better. So I got this on Amazon, it's just a torch, you can refill it, but it doesn't burn your shelves, or it doesn't burn things as easily as the barbecue zone does. There we go. And then I'll just, if you see any like fuzz or anything like that, you definitely want to get it out. I've got a little piece of sand or something right there. Anything like that you want to try to get out so it's not showing up in your finished project. That pops the bubbles really well actually, better than the barbecue torch does. Put it over these. tend to burn your shells. <laughs> this one's not such a big deal because they're not really going to show up in it, but we'll go over it anyway. This one they will show up, so we're going to try to get as many out as we can. I'm not going to pour any alcohol ink in this one. It's going to stay clear. So any bubbles I can get out, I need to get out. Before. You need to come back every few minutes and do this again. Or 
quite a while. Because you don't want, um, you know, you don't want bubbles coming out. This thing is stuck. I've gotten resin all over it so much that it's hard to even get it off to get the thing to turn off on me. Okay, now, so that's all my pictures. Now for my trays, let me put these alcohol inks away. Or at least get their lids on and get them out of the so before we knock them over and get everything messed up. Okay. I see another bubble in here. Okay, I see that thing didn't want to go off. So my trays, I just it doesn't take much to do them. I just barely coat the bottom. And all it's for is to give it kind of a glossy finish and just to secure down these stickers. Though I do glue them down, but that's all I do in this. So I don't use very much resin at all. I just make sure that it's all coated. I will go over it with the torch just to make sure there's no bubbles in there. But these are super easy to do. So, hopefully that gives you some idea of, I've had a lot of people asking for me to do the glass and resin seashells and projects and stuff they've been asking for videos. So, hopefully this gives you an idea of what I do. I will be doing more of them, probably not as long as this one. <laughs> this is kind of an introduction to, to the whole thing, um, so that's why I'm... This one is so long and I've been so detailed, but the rest of them I probably, you know, will, they'll go a lot quicker than this, so. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to continue pouring these in to the trays. I'm going to pop bubbles in the others, and then they just have to cure overnight. And I'll actually come back tomorrow and show you the finished products, okay? So I will see you then. Okay, so it's the next day, and I've removed the painter's tape from these. So, this one turned out really pretty, I think. So, it's clear. You know, you can see through, but it just turned out fabulous. I really like it. Um, I hope you can see well on here. It's hard to, hard to get it all on film. These will be up on my website um, if anybody is interested in purchasing them. So there's that one. This one turned out good. <laughs> it's just kind of simple but cute. Okay. And then uh, this one turned out really good, but I'm going to have to fix the frame. But no problem there. That's super easy. And as you can see, you can kind of see through the alcohol links. I'll just touch up the frame and it will be just fine beautiful and then this guy so this guy is going to have to have some more resin poured so as you saw I put the um, I put the painters tape on but it still managed to leak a little bit of resin under here so there is really I could sand that down I don't really want to and see I'm even having trouble getting all the painters tape off of this one because the resin kind of stuck still stuck to it somehow so but I will get this painter's tape off, and then um, I'm going to pour, I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pour another layer of resin on the back of this one, and um, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to put some blue alcohol inks in it, a different color than what's in there, and it will cover this up completely, and it'll just give it another dimension. So I've got to get this painter's tape off of here first. So let me do that, but let me show you the trays. The trays turned out well, too. So here's, I just put the stickers in the bottom of these and then resin over them, and it makes a really nice little trinket tray. So there's that one. There's this one. This one. They're just really cute. They're great little trays. I have one sitting in my bathroom with a candle in it with an ocean theme. So all of these trays I got done, and then I ran out of resin. So I've got to pour some more resin. Let me set these over here. I've got today's resin, because I'm out of the other kind. I'm using this Let's Resin. Again, it's a ratio one-to-one, -one, part A and B. 
I'll mix it just the same as I did yesterday and take this painter's tape off and I will be back to show you what we're going to do with this guy. Okay, so I've got my resin pretty mixed up. Um, now I did get the painter's tape off. The back of this is going to have to have some um, attention, the back of this frame, because like I said, it leaked out. I will have to paint this whole back of the frame probably, but that's okay. I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, and so I'm going to take my resin and as, if you'll notice, I'm pouring on the back side this time. And I've got it up on these little stands so that it doesn't, if it would leak out, it shouldn't. It should be completely clogged because it leaked from the front to the back. So I don't think I'll have a problem with leakage, but I put it on these stands just to be sure. So I'm going to pour the resin. Okay. And just spread it around. This does not need to be a thick layer. All we're doing is coating this and it's going to hide this defect right here. You won't even be able to see it. And I'm going to add some alcohol inks to it. So it'll get kind of a multi-layer effect with the alcohol inks. There will be alcohol inks on the front and then kind of a three-dimensional thing with some alcohol inks back here. I think it'll be really cool. I've never done this before, but this way. We're going to give it a try and see what happens. So I'm just making sure that the resin is in all the corners. It goes all the way across. And like I said, it does not need to be a thick layer at all. It can be thin. I may pour a little bit more in here, but I just want to be sure that it coats to all the edges. Now, resin is supposed to be self-leveling, so if your table's level, which I don't think mine is, <laughs> if your table's level, then you're good to go, <laughs> but I'm not too sure that my table's level. I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure it's not, but um, we're going to do the best we can here. So, there we go. Oops. Let me get that one up on there a little bit. Okay, so same thing with the bubbles. We're just going to use our torch or whatever this thing is. Get the bubbles out. Okay. Now. Uh, let's see. I can't decide if I want to do an aqua or a really dark blue in here. I kind of want to do a dark blue, but I think the aqua would probably blend better. I'm going to pour some resin on this smaller one right here. I'm going to do the same thing on the back. Just pour some resin and then um, add some alcohol ink in just because I think it was a little too plain. Let me scoot this guy over. And so, part of the problem is the papers are coming apart. That'll help. <laughs> um, so, scoot this guy over. And then scoop this guy over, so maybe you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Let's get it on the, on the little stands. There we go. Alright. Now, that one seems to be doing fine. If it leaks out the bottom, it should drip and not stay on the picture, which is what we want. <laughs> And I don't think it's going to leak, though, because, like I said, you know, it leaked the first time. So I think it's probably plugged up all the holes. So we're just going to pour some here with this one. Same thing. It just needs to be a thin layer. And I'm just going to all the edges, making sure that I coat them all really well. I may split this video up into two parts. I know it's super long, but this isn't something you can really rush. <laughs> you know, it just isn't. It is a slow process and takes days. You know, you've got to let your resin cure. You've got to, there's just a lot to it. So it's not something that can really be done quickly. A little bit more down here. There we go. And I'm not sure what color I'm going to do in this one. 
I do want to do some sort of background. I think it would be pretty. Okay, so just making sure that it is touching all of the edges. That everything looks good. Okay, I'm going to torch again, both of them. one I think I'm going to do this aqua color. I really kind of want to mix some of the dark blue in. There's a really pretty um, find it here. dark blue. Is this it? I don't know if that's it. Where did it go? It's called denim. I think here it is. Yeah. This, uh, yeah, denim. I don't know if I want to do that or not. We'll see. So let's go ahead and put some of the turquoise in it. I want to kind of go mid here. This is really close to the green that I've already got in there. So I think I'm going to have to go a little bluer with it. Let's grab this blue. This is just the regular glacier is what it's called. And I'm just kind of taking the darker ones at the top so it kind of does an ombre type thing. Just going to do three. And then I'm going to take denim, which is pretty dark, and I'm going to put it up at the very top in this corner. One, two, and three. Okay. And let's just see what that does. It's going to spread a little. Now, this would be pretty with blue in the background as well. Blue, green. What can I do in the background on this one that would be pretty? This is a pretty color green. It's called, um, is this the one that's called Bottle? I can't really tell. It's smeared on the front. Um, this is kind of a pretty teal-ish color. Let's, let's look at that. That might be pretty on there. Yeah, that is really pretty. I think I might do a little bit of this green down at the very bottom of the seahorse, too, just to kind of reinforce the dark green down here. I do have a green called Bottle. Is this it? Yeah, here's Bottle. This is a dark green. Yeah, there we go. Let's put some of that down at the bottom. I may put some of this in here, too. This is a pretty green. Okay. All right. So I think I'm going to add a little more of the darker blues up here at the top. They kind of faded. And that's what they do sometimes. You, you have to go back sometimes and add in a little bit more. Okay. We'll do this medium blue. And a couple more drops of this turquoise up here. Okay. Now I think I'm just going to let it go. We're going to see what it does. Um, and like I said, it should give kind of a 3D effect. A layered effect maybe would be a better word for it when we're done. So let me pop bubbles. Okay. And I 
I think I'm just going to let them go at that and we will see how things end up looking. Um, I am going to go ahead and pour these trays that are back here. And, you know, all I do for them is just pour a thin layer in and move it around. That's literally it. So I am going to do those. And I will be back tomorrow after this cures to show you the, the uh, uh, outcome of these. And I will fix the frame on that one and show you that as well. So be back. Okay, so I'm back with the finished product. So here is the seahorse. And I've got it set up here with my light box. I know it's kind of hard to see all through it, but you know, it is clear all the way through, except, I mean, it's got the alcohol inks in it, but it turned out really good, I think. I like it. So that's the seahorse. Here's the cross with the frame repaired. I just had to touch it up a little, that's all. And then over here, my room's a mess. Don't even look at it. I've got to uh, film a couple videos with that stuff that's laying over there. Uh, so this is the flower one. And it's just got a little bit of green behind it, but it turned out really cute too. So there you have it. Um, those are my resin projects for right now. And I'm just going to lay this back down so I don't mess it up. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm still working on some other things. There's a, a, a sunset with a, um, let me see if I can get this one picked up. This is a sunset with a palm tree. I had messed it up before and I was trying to fix it. I think it's going to look okay. I don't know. kind of looks like a demon. <laughs> but anyway, um, so yeah, look at my mess. Um, so that is the resin video and I'm sorry that there were parts of it where the audio was not good I did not realize um, I've never filmed like this before I usually film jewelry making tutorials so I had no idea that it was going to be uh, like that but next time I'll do better I promise so thanks for watching guys I'll see you in the next video bye mm -hmm.